Welcome once again to Commander by Dayton. Today's video was brought to us by patron supporter Squishy. Squishy is a longtime Yu-Gi-Oh player who recently saw the light and was converted by their boyfriend into playing Magic, specifically Commander. This time, they wanted a video built around Perforos Bronze-Blooded. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. YouTube tells me that only about 15% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So please, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. It really does help the channel, and it's free. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Perforos Bronzeblooded is a 7-6 legendary enchantment god with Indestructible. Like all the gods from Theros, Perforos requires devotion to become a creature. In his case, the minimum devotion is 5. Perforos gives other creatures we control haste. Additionally, we may pay 3 mana and put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from our hand onto the battlefield, although we sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. In other words, we have a sneak attack in the command zone. Sneak attack, first printed in Urza's block, has seen play in both Legacy and Commander for a long time. Many players use the card to put out extremely powerful creatures, like the Eldrazi Titans. However, Squishy specifically requested that the deck stay under $300, so those weren't a viable option. I also asked Squishy how mean they were wanting to be, and their response was, no one should love me by the end, not even myself. With the goal of self-loathing in mind, I present you Perforos Bronzeblooded. But before we get to our deck list, we should keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lanes and 13 pieces of ramp, 10 pieces of card advantage, 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, 1 sudden I win card. Nykthos Shrine to Nyx for mana ramp, War Room for card advantage, Rogue's Passage to make our big smashy creatures unblockable, Scavenger Grounds for graveyard hate, and 33 snow-covered mountains. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Fire Diamond, Mind Stone, Fell War Stone, and Worn Power Stone all make up our mana rocks. Extra Planar Lens, Gauntlet of Power, and Caged Sun all help to double our mana production. Wayfarer's Bauble, Burnished Heart, and Solemn Simulacrum for Land Ramp, and a Mana Geyser serving as our single ritual. Dragon Mage, Sandstone Oracle, Ruin Grinder, Neheb Dreadhorde Champion, Runehorn Hellkite, Valakut Awakening, Thrill of Possibility, Unexpected Windfall, Wheel of Misfortune, Jessica's Will, Endless Atlas, The Immortal Sun, Underworld Breach, and Gamble all make up our card advantage package. I know that that seems like a lot, but this deck will go through cards quickly, so I wanted to have some extras. Meteor Golem, Chaos Warp, Sarkins of the Ceiling, Blood Moon, Tybalt's Trickery, A Braid, Wild Ricochet, Bolt Bend, Visions of Ruin, Biforce, and Soul Guide Lantern make up our interaction package. Blasphemous Act, Magma Quake, Chain Reaction, and Nevenerals Disc all help to clear the board if things get out of hand. For Smashing Face, we've got Dracuseth Maw of Flames. Combustible Gear Hulk, Kitali Primal Storm, Triplicate Titan, Phyrexian Triniform, Ilharg the Raze Boar, Ancient Stone Idol, Ryusei the Falling Star, and Atsushi the Blazing Sky. Industrial Advancement lets us cheat more creatures into play. Feld into the third path lets us copy any of our already played creatures, as does Mimic Vat. Goblin Welder and Trash for Treasure let us sacrifice an artifact or a treasure token to bring back a different artifact. Flame Shadow Conjuring lets us make copies of any of the big creatures we cheat into play. 
with Delina Wildmage playing a similar role. Cauldron of Souls brings back all of our creatures after they die, but if we want to be truly evil, we have Conjurer's Closet, Erratic Portal, and Sundial of the Infinite, each of which allow us to keep the creatures we snuck onto the battlefield. Now that we have our deck list, let's compare it to our checklist. 50 mana sources split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp, right on target. 14 pieces of card advantage. A little high, but we'll be grateful we have it with this deck. 11 pieces of interaction, 4 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, 1 sudden I win card in Blood Moon. I know, I know, Blood Moon isn't technically a win con, but lately people have been playing a lot of non-basics in their 3 or 4 color commander decks. Blood Moon basically acts as one-sided mass land destruction in Commander. If played at the correct time, we should lock our opponents out long enough to finish them before they can recover. I know we don't have a ton of sacrifice effects in the deck, but I thought it would be funnier to cheat big creatures into play with Perforos, and then keep them. Do you have a Perforos Bronze-Blooded deck? What was your secret deck deck? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Danon. One of the tiers is specifically set up for Commander. For only $25, I will build you a custom Commander deck based around your specifications, and even do a deck video on it. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons, Jiraiya, Waffles, Muffins, Casey, Nick, Marcus, Black Dragon, Phoenix of Ice, Daniel, Kyo, and Squishy. You guys are awesome. I post new Commander Deck videos often, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. Also, if you're a fan of anime and manga like I am, feel free to check out my other channel, Musings by Danon. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danon.